What's good guys? So in this video, we are going to cover the five main differences between Bubble and AppGyver. And this will help you optimize to figure out which tool is the right for your job. And so let's get started. So the first thing is that AppGyver is mobile first. And so what this means is that when you are initially building an app, you have here a preview and you are able to preview this on an iPhone, on an iPad, on all these apps. And the fact that it's mobile first means that when you're designing this app, typically you're designing it for a phone, for a smartphone or a tablet. And so if you go into this launch folder, so I have an app here. If you go into this launch folder, you can see that there are mobile apps. You, you can create a web app. You can create a Mac app but it's mobile first, meaning that it's optimized for a mobile experience. Where, whereas if I go into Bubble, this is mostly for creating web apps. It's creating web apps, it's creating pages. Um, it's not really for creating mobile apps. So that's the first main difference. The second main difference is, is the UI. Here in Bubble, the way the UI works is that you're dragging and dropping elements and Here's where you configure it. You can start a workflow when this element is interacted with. You, you have conditions that define how the element behaves, if some other, you know, if a condition is met, if a condition is not met. And you have various transitions here. Whereas if you go to AppGyver, uh, you also have something like this. You have in the UI here. And so if you drag and drop it here, it's different. You have your properties, you have your layout. You have all that but if you want to create logic you kind of have to go in here and here you have your events with that element so if it's tapped if it's clicked something like this you have your elements so, and one other thing that's different concerning the ui is that you have something called a component market so i can essentially go out and i can take these so-called complex components that somebody else created so i can let's say i want to i like this or let's say i like this checkbox here i can click it and I can install it and I can start using this component. So I just installed it and I can go in here, installed, and I can drag and drop this component here. And now I have this, this component, I have this kind of page layout, it's right here in Bubble. If you wanna create something like this, you have to use plugins. And so you cannot go out, there's no component market where you can go out and you can start you know, utilizing complex, these composite components that were created by somebody else. And so if you choose this component here, you have various properties. Here you have the label, and here you have various states. Disabled is true, I can change the label, a label goes here, stuff like that. I'll, I can also create my own components. So it says here, you have not created any composite components for this app yet. You can do so by selecting a container component and clicking convert to new component from the properties panel. So in Bubble, you can't really do that. You have your components here. Th these are actually a plugin. And if you want to create something custom, you have to go out and you have to work with plugins. And fortunately, I have a video on that on my channel. You can just Google for it and you're going to find a couple of videos that will teach you how to create plugins with Bubble. So that's another major difference. The next major difference is that in Bubble, you have support for various data sources. So one data source could be an internal database where you're actually creating data types and then you can actually fill it in with data. But if you don't want to do that, you can install an API connector here and then you can simply uh, have various API calls. So you can have data stored internally with the app or you can have various external APIs that connect and fetch data from a third-party app. So you have a couple of options here. With AppGyver, unfortunately, you do not have a way to have data stored locally. And so here I am in the app. If I go into data here, I have data resources and connectors. So data resources is what you're going to be using 99% of the time. And all it is is essentially an API. So I have here this API, and this is a REST API direct integration. And I'm essentially using an API. This is the resource URL. These are the various methods just like you would do in Bubble, right? So if you go into Bubble, you go into Plugins, API Connector, you have your APIs here. But in AppGyver, there is no way to have data stored internally. So, you know, if you want to create a simple app, you just want to populate random data, you cannot 
you know, populate it internally. You have to go out and you have to create a fake API and then make calls on it. It's really not an issue. It, there are lots of ways of um, creating a, a mock API or a fake API. I, I actually have a video where you uh, you can learn about various tools that allow you to do that. But it is a little bit more annoying. So if you do not have much, uh, much experience with uh, creating APIs, REST APIs, stuff like that, then you have to learn that real quick. One thing that AppGyver does have is the so-called connector. So here's a connector to Google Firebase. And if you enable it, the Google Firebase connector provides you access to multiple functionalities you can add to your Composer app. So data resources that you utilize Cloud Firestore, Google's Cloud database. This is actually a really, really high quality, high performance database. User authentication, Firebase authentication. So that's awesome, right? Firebase authentication, you can have Google OAuth, you can have a lot of different providers in there. File uploads and downloads, push notifications on iOS. So this is a great, a great thing here. This is not available uh, in Bubble right out of the box. And this is actually available in AppGyver. So as you can see, AppGyver is more about you defining where the data is and then fetching that data. Where Bubble, in my opinion, is more user-friendly. So if you don't know anything about APIs, you don't know how to create mock APIs, you don't know how to go out and you know get real data APIs, then it's easy. You can just go into data, create your data types, you know, user, user. You can you can do something like customers. Uh, then you can have, you know, whatever um, products here. And then you can define the types. And then you have data immediately for testing. So for me personally, somebody with uh, experience doing REST APIs, it's not really a big deal. But for somebody that's just starting out, uh, you know, probably Bubble is going to be an easier way to kind of get started and to get going with. The next major difference between Bubble and AppGyver, and this is one of the bigger differences, is how it handles data. So with Bubble, it's very easy, right? So I just go in here and I, you know, I click here, something like this, and I can insert, I can have static data or I can insert dynamic data. So here's my dynamic data. Let's say I want current user's email, done. Okay, let's say I want to delete that. I want to do a do search for customers. I can add a new constraint where customer name is, et cetera, et cetera. Done. Let's say I want uh, I want to show you. Know, let's say I want something like I can go in here, dynamic data. I want to do a mm, do a search for customers, and I want to you know list the count of customers. Done. All of that is very very easy and straightforward. And this is essentially data handling, is how you define data, how do you read data, how do you write data. So reading data is very, very simple. Writing data is very, very simple. Now, when it comes to AppGyver, it's a little bit more involved, okay? Because the way it works is that, first of all, you have to define your data. So once you define your API, so for instance, I have here various calls, I have my base API here, and I have my get collection. So if I go to the schema here, I have all of these elements, I have all of these data types, and then I can go back to the UI here, and I can say, okay, this thing is gonna take content from not as a static text, I can choose it here, and I can say data variables, and let's say I have an app variable, or a page variable, or a page parameter, data variable, and I can pull that data. But if I have a repeating field, so this is a repeating field here, I can come in here and I can say this is a data item in repeat and then I can select the element. So it's a little bit more involved. It's a little bit more involved because in my view, Bubble is easier. It's more user friendly when we are talking about uh, repeating elements or you know single elements that are not repeated. With Bubble, it's kind of like straightforward. At least for me, it was a straightforward experience. Whereas with AppGyver, it's, it took me a little more time to kind of get used to it. Obviously, after a while, after kind of building some apps, playing around with it, getting some practice, I am comfortable in either way. I'm comfortable in AppGyver, I'm comfortable in Bubble. But I, I think for beginners, the way to do it with Bubble is going to be easier. You know, let me know in the comments if you agree with that. But in my opinion, it's just going to be easier in Bubble. Because with AppGyver, I have to go in here and let's say... You know, I have to make sure that I have the right element. So for instance, I have here Portugal and I can go in here and I can do a formula and it's like, 
you know, crazy stuff. I have all of these variables. It's a little bit more uh, complicated. It's a little bit more complex. So the way I can describe it is that uh, AppGyver is, is more friendly towards people with some software engineering background. So somebody like me that has that experience, that has that background, I found the AppGyver way to be very, very elegant. Bubble's way is just too simple and kind of very dumbed down. Whereas AppGyver's way, it's like it's it's a little bit more elegant. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do uh, that you know you it's not as 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 uh, straightforward to do in Bubble. So for me, as somebody with experience, somebody looking for a challenge, I found AppGyver to be cool. But if you're just starting out, you just want to build an app very very quickly, then you know Bubble's dynamic data is the way to go. It's just a lot easier. It's a lot simple to get started. But if you want a challenge, like I said, check out AppGyver. But the way they handle it, the way they do everything is completely different. So that's a big, big difference. Another main difference between Bubble and AppGyver is workflows. And that is basically the, the logic of the app. So if I want something to happen, I have an event. If I, somebody clicks on a button or changes text or does anything and I want an action to take place, the way you implement it is very different uh, in Bubble versus AppGyver. So for instance, let's say I have this thing here. I can double click and I can start an edit workflow when this checkout is clicked. When it's clicked, I can do something like this. I have data, I have email, I have payment. I can do an alert. I can just search for a show message in an alert box. And I can say here, um, you know, I can specify the kind of alert element and I can change it also. I can change the message and I can say, hey, you just clicked this button. Okay, so if I can do something like this. So if I run this app, uh, it's going to do exactly what I wanted to do. And so here we go. This is clickable. I click it and then it just tells me that. On the other hand, when it comes to AppGyver, it's a little bit different. So I have here my app. Let's say I want to go to this element here. I click on it. And I have this expanded. If I don't have this expanded, I have here show logic for paragraph one. And so I open it up and I have an event here, right? So I have an event. I can change the event here. This is the data. This is the component. This is an advanced trigger. So let's say I want component tab. And then I can scroll down and I can say, okay, do I want to send a set an app variable or a page variable or a data variable? Do I want to do a dialog? So I can just drag it here, connect them, and now we have a dialog. I can click here, and then this dialog can display a message. And obviously, I can bind it, right? This thing is bound to static text, but let's say I want to bind it to some variable, right? Maybe it could be a component property. Uh, maybe it could be a data variable. It could be output of another node. This very Lots of very, uh, very, very interesting ways of doing it. We have a formula which Bubble does have. But what I really like is that if I scroll down a little bit, we have this data thing. And right away, you know, AppGyver tells you something called CRUD, and that's create, read, update, delete. So I can get a record, get record collection, create the record, update record, replace record, and delete record. So it's, it's this record centric. So for instance, if I go into data right here, check this out, I go to data and I go back and I go to my data resource here. So I have data, one data resource in this app. I can have multiple, obviously. But this is the data resource that this app is interfacing with. This is this API, and this API has CRUD. It has uh, create, create record, it has update record, it has delete record, and it has get record. That's the read part, right? So you have C-R-U-D, that's create, read, update, delete. And we have C-U-D, and then get is the same thing as read, essentially. So all of this becomes automatically available when I go in here. So right away, I can get a record. So if I tap it, I can go in here and I can say get a record. And so once I get the record, I have two ports here. The first port here, so if I choose it, I go into outputs. It tells me output at port one is the record, the successfully retrieved record. Outputs at port two are errors, object with three properties, request fail, server error, resource not found, unknown, okay? So you can kind of read about it. And this is the first uh, object with three properties. You have a code, you have a message, and you have a row error. So let's say I get this record. I can come in here, I have an alert. I can drag and drop it. I can connect it to, I can go to this alert, go into properties, and I can actually connect it to. I can say the dialog title, I can go in here, and I can say output, output value of another node, get record, and then I can, you know, 
Display, okay, I, you know, which field that I want. Let's say I want to display code. Boom, done. Now that element, this value, or the, the return value is bound to the alert. And it's going to display it correctly. I can come in here and I can do a, a toast here. And I can say, well, I'm going to get an error here. So I can connect the two. I can go in here. Output value of another node. This is going to be get record. And here we can display the message. So if it's successful, it's going to go to this dialog alert. If it's not successful, we're going to display a dialog toast. So this is really, really nice. And like I said, if you're kind of a developer, if you are more kind of technically minded, more kind of an, kind of an engineering mindset, for me, AppGyver is like awesome, right? It's very straightforward and it totally makes sense. But Bubble is definitely user friendly because I can simply go in here. I want to show an alert, show a message in an alert box. Uh, I can do that. But if I ha if I want to show an error, then I have to you know create some kind of logic in there. I need to you know say that this is going to be a conditional. Do this if there's no error. Do this if there's an error. So there's a lot of things that you kind of have to do. Whereas with AppGyver, you have these two ports, and right away you can create like an if this or then this. If we don't have an error, show this. Else, if we have an error, show that. So there's lots of interesting ways of kind of going about it. Now, there are obviously more differences between uh, AppGyver and Bubble, but I wanted to take the time and show you kind of the main ones. And hopefully, these main ones are going to help you to make a decision whether you want to build your next app with AppGyver or you want to switch over to Bubble and build an app with them. So I really hope you found this valuable. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Don't forget to give this video a fat like. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you real, real soon.